I'm Eric, and today on Coding with Purpose, we are going to solve the Safecracker 50 puzzle. So this puzzle consists of five dials. The inner four um, can rotate, and the goal is to um, come up with a position for the dials which allows every one of the pies to equal 50. And there is only one solution to this problem. Uh, there's about 64,000 combinations. We're going to use Python for this. And we're going to um, basically take a brute force attack. And we're going to turn every dial until we have a solution. So join me. So the first thing we should consider is how we're going to represent this data in Python. So Python has a data structure known as a list, which is the most obvious candidate for this type of data. So each one of these rings has 16 values. Most of the rings have both inner and outer. And so we'll take care of that in our naming convention for the list. And the one thing we do need to consider is that some of these uh, rings have blank entries. So if we um, hit one of these empty entries, we need to take the numerical value from below. So within the list, we need to account for these blank areas. So we could use almost anything. In this case, I'm just going to use a negative one. So a negative one represents a blank entry, and um, any other entry should be a positive number representing what is actually on the ring. I'm also not going to assume any prior knowledge of Python. So if we bring up uh, this is PyCharm, one of the more popular IDEs for Python. We'll create a new project. That's one. And we're going to use Python uh, 3x for this. So this will be a relatively simple project. Uh, we'll just do a single file. So a new Python file. Now, Python files, if you're executing the file, um, it's only going to execute the code that appears after it verifies that it's the main. So it's an interpretive language. So any functions we're going to use will define before um, this conditional. But once we run uh, Python main.py, uh, it's going to execute everything that is below this line, this conditional. Also, Python utilizes, uh, it, it doesn't utilize the blocking that we might be used to in C or Java. Um, it uses indentation to represent different blocks. So people coming from C or Java, it can be, uh, take a little while to get used to. So what we're going to do is establish a naming convention. So if we start off with row zero, so this would be the bottom most row, the dial it um, does not actually turn. And we want row zero outer. And we'll start with that. So in Python, we use brackets to denote a list. And in this case, we're starting at an arbitrary point. And just utilizing, you know, putting in the numbers as we see them. Uh, you do want to be careful with this step because if you screw up bringing some of these numbers in, you're not going to know until you run the whole program and then you're not going to get a solution and you might spend a lot of time trying to debug it when actually it's a data problem. So you just want to be very careful as you bring these in. Um, I'll go ahead and just magically bring in this whole group. So what we have here is the bottom most row, outer and inner and all the different numerical values associated with them, uh, 16 in every list. As we start looking at row one, which is the first 
um, outermost ring that turns, we start getting into these negative ones. So these negative ones are the blanks. Uh, the inner rows do not have blanks, as you can see, row two inner, row three inner, and then the top row, row four, has no outer or inner. So that allows us to define uh, the data set itself that we're working with. So what are we gonna do with this data? What we're going to do is loop through each one of these lists. We'll do the summation and we'll figure out if it sums up to 50. Once we get um, one slice that sums up to 50, then we'll go ahead and check the other 15 slices and uh, verify as to whether or not um, they all sum up to 50. So we have one critical choice here. So we're dealing with Python lists. We can choose to do something like this uh, for outer value in. So this is a for loop convention that would allow us to go through the different values one at a time. Um, and immediately it might seem like this is a good direction to go in, but the problem we run into is with those uh, negative ones, with those blank entries in the rings. And so once we have that blank entry, now we need to go to the row below. And once we've done that, knowing what the value is doesn't really buy us as much as knowing what the index is. So if we know what the index is for the outer row, because the outer and inner rows are obviously synced, they're in the same ring, we can take the index for the outer row in order to get us the value of the inner row. And so instead of for value in row outer loop, what we're going to do is do a for index, for index one. So we're dealing with the index of the first row, the first ring that's in motion in range. So we're going to do zero to 16. And this is not inclusive of 16. So we have a total of 16 values, zero through 15. And these are the indexes for uh, that first ring that's turning. So what we'll do is set this up for all four rings. We'll also add um, a count so that it, this is the count of the number of solutions. So one question that we might find interesting because we'll go through uh, all of the different possible uh, combinations, there might be more than one solution. So we'll use the count to denote whether or not there's more than one solution. But what's going on here is we are creating a uh, nested loop of all 56,000 combinations, uh, 16 to the power of four. So we have um, the four different indexes representing the four rings as they turn. And what we're going to do is for uh, each combination, we're going to check that first slice, um, the slice that represents the, well, basically the start of the outermost column. So, so this 10 here represents uh, slice zero and we're just gonna check slice zero and see if it's 50. So we'll accomplish that by calling a function. We'll give it a slice. Uh, we'll give it a slice uh, ID. So slice uh, ID zero is that first slice, that top slice that includes the number 10 and we're going to um, create a function that will take that slice and will go ahead and do the addition for us. So coming from other programming languages, this may seem uh, a little uh, 
weird because we're going to call this function from the main part of our program. The function is going to use all of these different uh, variables. It's going to use all the lists and it's going to use the indexes, but we're not going to pass those in. This is something that Python allows us to do and it's a huge shortcut. Rather than passing all this information in, we're going to have it run the add function um, just assuming these values. So these values will get automatically passed in. So before the main conditional, we'll go ahead and create a function. We'll call it add. And we're going to, we want to pass in the slice. Now, why are we passing in the slice? Obviously, we could just assume slice zero but then we've created an addition function which doesn't really buy us very much because we are going to have to check all the other slices so we may as well pass in the slice that we care about so we're going to uh, basically add and i will just cut and paste this in and then talk about the function itself so we're going to start by looking at row one so this is the first ring that moves. So we'll uh, take into account the bottom most ring uh, later on when we're um, ready to add all the values together. So what we're going to do here is look at the um, outer, the, the value in the outer ring, and we're going to ask ourselves whether it's negative one. So if it's a blank, then we're going to want to go to the row below. So in this case, it's not a negative one. And just to talk for a second about this convention. So we're, we need to be able to accommodate a slice. So we want to be able to tell if it's not the slice zero, if it's a different slice. So what we have to do is add the index and the slice together. But if we do that, we can very easily get a number which is greater than the maximum index seen in the list. So in this case, we'd be dealing with 16. So basically, we're using the modulus operation here in order to handle the situation where the index plus slice is uh, greater than 16, because all we care about is what that remainder is. So we do that, we find out that it has a real value. And so consequently, value for row one is going to equal whatever value that is. If that's not the case, if it is negative one, if it is a blank, then we're going to go to um, the row below. And in this case, we're dealing with row zero and row zero can't move. So we just care about the slice. We do basically the same thing for row two and row three. However, when we look when, when it, we are dealing with a blank and we have to look at the row below, we are looking at the row below based on the index, which is already being used for that row, plus the slice and modulus 16 again. Uh, row four, as you might recall, only has one row and potentially does have blanks. Eight of them are blanks. And so we handle that by looking at row three in the case of blank values. Now we have the four values for the four rows that are in motion, and we add those together with the value of the of row zero of the slice. So this function gives us the um, summation for one particular slice. And so consequently, this function this particular conditional will now work. So if it does equal to 50, what should we do next? Well, the way I chose to solve this was just to say that the solution is now true. So capital T, this is just a Python Boolean. But what I'm doing here is saying that once we know slice zero is 50, we're just going to assume that we have a solution and try to disprove that solution. 
So we're going to disprove it by, let's look at SL for slice. So what we're going to do is now look through all of the different slices. And in fact, we've already verified zero. So we, we're going to look at the next 15 slices. And so if and slice Okay, so if the slice is not equal to 50, now the solution is going to equal false. Okay, so if the solution at this point, after we've looked at those other 15 slices, if the solution still equals true, then here we have the actual solution. So what are we going to do with it? Uh, first, we'll uh, need to increase the count to show that we have a real solution. And now we have to think about how to print this or how to show it. Now, one possibility is just to give the index values, but that requires that someone set up the puzzle originally conforming to all of these different start locations to find in our list and then uh, move each individual ring a certain number of times in order to correspond to the index. Um, I find it a little easier to think about um, giving them lists of actual values and then seeing if they can uh, figure out a solution, you know, to move the dials based on those locations. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead, I will print out the index values. And then I'll also print out five rows. And the purpose here being that we can use these values in order to figure out the actual locations. So in order to run this in PyCharm, we need to set up a configuration for it. So it's gonna be Python. The script will be main.py. I'll go ahead and call it main. We're not passing in any parameters. And so that should be it. So now we have main. We could debug it here, but let's go ahead and just give it a shot. And there's the solution. So it's telling us that these are the index values if we wanted to go in that direction. Or what we can do, each one of these represents a slice. So um, well, actually what we're doing is looking uh, left to right. So slice zero is going to be a blank in the first row, a blank in the second row, a 10 and then an eight. And so, in the end, we get a puzzle that looks like that. As you can see, every one of those slices total up to 50. So, in this case, uh, Python came back with one solution, and it, uh, the way the program works, it checked all 56,000 uh, possibilities. Anyway, email me or comment below if you have any questions and have a great day.